we have a new JavaScript tooling in town. Not exactly new, I wouldn't say it's a new thing because a lot of these things you would have already heard of if you have used React or any sort of like newer sort of framework uh, these days, you would have heard about Vite. Vtest is a great thing. We also use it internally for testing. Rolldown is a JavaScript bundler and OXC, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but it's the tool chain basically, sort of like, you know, combining a few utilities within a single thing. So this, all this combined there is a new company in the town called as void zero dot dev which is by the creators of Vite and vtest and these two tiktok technologies themselves and they have raised a four and a half 4.6 million seed funding round so for those of you who don't know ivan Yu is the founder and the creator of Vite and the founder of this company also so they have founded void zero Incorporation, a company dedicated to building an open source, high performance and unified development tool chain for JavaScript ecosystem. We have raised 4.6 million in seed funding led by Axel. So, okay, I have some thoughts about this. I'll share with that, share that with you guys and would we'll discuss, love to know what do you think about in comments also. Wheat is one of the most, like it says in the blog itself, as the author of one of the most widely used front-end frameworks, I've spent a significant effort researching every layer of JavaScript tooling stack, assembling hundreds of dependencies and designing complex abstractions. The goal was to always give end users a cohesive out of the box development experience. These efforts have eventually led to creation of Vite in 2020. So I completely agree. I think I, I remember that time before 2020, I think uh, when Next.js was there. So um, the only sane way to run React was either if you use create React app, which was like the, you know, standard thing, which React documentation also recommended that uses Webpack, or you would go ahead and start a Next.js project which also used to work by the way on Webpack. So Webpack was the central technology, right? Then somewhere along the lines, ES build came up as a very native thing, right? A very, very fast compiler. It's still like, it's it's one of the best things out there, but it was still like bare bones. It was like a raw. It did not support tech like, I mean, it does support if you wanted to do that, you could have done that, but it was not a, like a fully featured bundle. Veet was one of the technologies, which I'm, I don't remember if it was made for Vue JS directly or it was just generally available for everything but Vite was made by the creator of Vue who is also like Ivan Yu I think that's where Vue comes from V and U I don't know <laughs> maybe so uh, I think Vite was probably the idea was to build it for something like Vue but it became like so popular that like it, it was so efficient that it made a lot of sense to create it for every other framework as well to support every other framework so now I think the official way for React JS also if you head over to reactjs.org, I think, oh, they have changed to react.dev, yeah. So I think if you go ahead and go to the installation part, starting a new React project, you would see that it supports create next app. It supports Remix, Gatsby, Expo. So it doesn't give you like an explicit documentation, I think for Wheat, but Re Remix, for example, uses Wheat, right? So, so these technologies, these frameworks, even the one framework, which I showed you one stack.dev, this also uses Wheat. So it's very popular for other frameworks to build on top of Wheat now as well, because it's like very handy. It's very fast. First of all, it has a good plugin system and it's, it's, relatively mature, right? It has been there since the last three, four years in the industry. So Weed is also, like it says, powering meta frameworks like Remix, Nuxt, Astro, Svelte, Solid Start, Quick, Redwood, and more, right? And if you see the download trends, it's obviously like increasing a lot. So this graph is for the last four years. Um, not sure why Vite is a date on the x-axis, but okay, makes sense. So maybe this is like 2021, 2022, 2023, and now we are at 2024, probably. So performance wise, uh, Vite remains bottlenecked by duplicated parsing and serialization cost across different tools, and it can't fully leverage native tooling like ESBuild due to feature constraints and limited customizability. We started to design a new bundler roll down tailored for Vite's need. So again, if you look at this whole space, there are a lot of things, you know, that's happening. So in, inside of the roll down page, they say that currently Vite relies on two bundlers internally, ESBuild and Rollup. There is also, if you have seen something known as, I'm not sure if you guys know about this, but uh, it's a very interesting project known as RSPAC, which is doing sort of the same thing, but um, 
they i feel they are like going much broader in terms of what can be done this is like a i think this is would be a drop in replacement with for webpack because they are building it in such a way that it uses the webpack compatible api some of these the people who are building them also showed like you can run next js with rs pack instead of like using turbo uh, turbo pack and so on so so there are like some good options emerging in this space and e- even like in fact turbo is also like a custom sort of bundler in a way built for next js for now but not sure like if they will extend it to other frameworks at some point so they are building roll down as a compiler and roll down aims to be aligned with the roll ups api i mean <laughs> everyone is trying to build an- another thing but with the compatibility of the previous thing which is by the way like how things work because otherwise you would not get adoptability if you just break the api spec completely try to do something new like in a completely new direction it's very hard to align the community that way imagine a tool chain that is unified high performance composable runtime agnostic see my problem with these things might not be with beat again like it would depend on how things play down the line you know only time will tell but my problem with these blog posts is that i have read these blog posts in past right so this this similar idea of unification of javascript and you know having a nice runtime was done by dino years ago right i won't say like it got up as a huge thing you would still see node.js being the leader in the server side javascript environment then bun came along right it started to disrupt it great idea you know just running the typescript and everything like esm common js compatibility and performance of course great idea but still like it hasn't caught up that much compared to node js in this whole space itself if you are aware about biome so biome also aims to be a project which is like a tool chain for your web project it comes with a linter it comes with a couple of more things you know so replacing es lint and all those things again not a one on one thing but what i'm trying to say is that every once in a while what happens is that people realize that there is a problem yes of course the ecosystem is broken some things are slow some things don't work then somebody sets apart to create a new foundation create a new thing altogether and what happens more than more often than not is that new thing becomes one of the options not the de facto thing right it becomes one of the choices for doing the things and people are then even more confused than what needs to be done right should i be doing this or should i be doing one of the other options this also comes with their own trade offs some things here some things there i don't know like it it would become a mess i know it for a fact because this problem has been tried to solve you know people have tried to solve this before and this just becomes one of the additional things uh, as one of the things which people can opt in for but anyway i am excited to announce that we have raised a 4.6 million seed fund to pursue this vision our seed round was led by axel with participation from some of these investors our uh, over the past year we have built a team with deep expertise in javascript tooling including creators and core contributors to widely adopted open source projects like vite vtest oxc and the former core contributors of rs pack okay i did not know that so rs pack like i mentioned some of the contributors are also working on void 0 now so my biggest i mean this is also all fine and nice right you know you can have like competing frameworks and competing tool chains and all of that my biggest question is that how would this business make money because at the end of the day like um i mean when venture capital is cool but you still have to start making money at some point right and if you are building tooling tool chain the only way i could imagine like you are making money is that when you bring something on your server and you rent out servers right to the users to the end users whether that's for ci whether that's for development whether that's for runtime whether that's for like the bun's idea for example i think bun bun's monetization strategy would be at some point to create a platform as a service which uses bun as a runtime for doing everything right and very fast very cheap because bun is fast to execute cpu duration like how like cloudflare works but even then i'm not sure because if you see like providers like cloudflare workers aws google cloud they have taken all these open source tools node js java all of these these technologies they have deployed it really well on their cloud platforms and over the last few years because of the optimizations they were able to make in their stack money they are getting from enterprise customers they are able to drive down cost a lot for the end users right so competing on that level requires something as a usp right and it can't be i'm not sure if it can be just software and even if it is just software it can't be open source right <laughs> because with open source the thing is that somebody else can just directly 
deployed on their own things unless you know you have a very non permissive license and yeah they'll just they'll just not need your service then anymore so that is my question that how this mission and everything is fine but what's the business plan what's how would you make money from this software the software is great you i think like uh, if you go to weed github repository you will find that ivan you has has a lot of sponsors right so he's making a lot of money from github itself right so 231 sponsors current sponsors i am assuming that you will probably like $5 a month is the lowest then there is a $50 a month so then there are like you know it goes all the way to up to many many tiers right so if on average if you are just looking at $100 a month as an average ticket size also then this corresponds to like 23 24000 a month he is not probably doing it for money or he is not probably doing to create it for create this and you know turn it into a monetization thing from day one which i agree but the venture the vc who has put in money needs to have their returns and maybe like 10x 50x whatever that number is and they would probably want to hear what the monetization model is so by definition that also means that ivan and the team has to work on a monetization model and i'm very interested to see that if there is a monetization model here outside of you know sponsorships or outside of like open source work because it would be i would say it would be unprecedented in a way because it has not been done before if you look at any other provider in the open source world i don't know like there are providers like red hat for example which are open source um, but they charge for you for the enterprise things right so if that is the model which they are heading for it would be interesting to see because javascript developers are very very habitual of you know not paying for anything now if you're building anything which is like a javascript tooling or something like that there is a very bad habit of figuring out like the open source alternative of that or you know the next best thing for that instead of like paying for that specific thing so i don't know how this would play it out do let me know in the comments if you have any ideas on what sort of monetization strategies can work for a company like this void zero uh is an interesting name because it's if you know this this is like uh this is like a valid javascript expression so you can literally like write void zero it just returns undefined i don't know maybe that is the that is the philosophy but yeah interesting project let's see what happens in the next 6 months 1 year of time rooting for them obviously because wheat has made a lot of interesting developments they have pushed the ecosystem a lot they have pushed webpack you know these rs pack these other things to innovate and become a little bit more faster in their things so yeah let me know what do you think that's all for this one i'm going to see you in the next video really soon